the literary, epigraphic, and archaeological dimension of religions, particularly applied to the Black Sea and the case study of Albia Pontica. Please, um, Sofia, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Eleonora. Thank you, everybody. My presentation is dedicated to the cult of Apollo Yatros, attested to by many Albion inscriptions. In the archaic and classical periods, this cult existed only in several Malaysian colonies of the Black Sea coast and nowhere else in the Greek world. I pay special attention to the meaning of Apollo's epiclesis. Apollo was the most popular god of Greek colonists. He was worshipped and mentioned in the literary sources under various epiclesis, but the epiclesis yatros, yatros, which means healer in translation from Greek, is attested to only in the northwestern Malaysian colonies, um, Apollonia, Histria, Tiras, Olbia, and Bosporan cities. Apollo undoubtedly had ties with medicine and healing, but the epiclesis yetros does not occur in literary texts. In the few cases where Apollo is called yetros, namely in the comedies by Aristophanes and the poem of Lycophron, the word is used as an attribute, indicating the god's activity. The Hippocratic Oath, the only text where Apollo is called yetros, is dated to the Roman time, and Apollo's epiclesis there probably follows of the Roman Apollo Medicus. In the northwestern Black Simulation colonies, the cult of Apollo Atros is attested to by graffiti, lapidated inscriptions, coins, statues, and archaeological remains of the sanctuaries. I'll show the most conspicuous examples shortly. At one of the most important cults in Olbia, but it was even more prominent in western Black Sea Malaysian colonies, where Apollo Yatros was the head of the pantheon. In the modern scholarship, there are two approaches to the cult of Apollo Yatros. <clears throat> First, that it was a typical Greek cult established by the Didymian Oracle, specifically for the Pontic colonies and spread from the northern Black Sea area. And that the cult had some indigenous features and emerged in the Western Black Sea region. Let us examine each approach. The concept of the pure Greek origin of the cult has several weak points. The text of alleged Didymian oracle uttering does not exist and is not even mentioned in the extant resources. Besides, in the Greek world, uh, there are no analogies to such an oracle. The excavated sanctuaries of Apollo at Ross have not yielded any evidence of healing activities. None of the inscriptions referring to Apollo at Ross even hinted healing. Some scholars try to get around this difficulty, suggesting an interpretation of the epiclesis yet Ross in the broad sense, not just as a healer, but as a savior. It's there. However, the word yetros is never used in this sense in the Greek sources. The second approach, which I share, assumes that the cult uh, had an indigenous component. Apollo Yatros, during the archaic and classical periods, was worshipped only in the Black Sea Ionic colonies. The cult uh, most probably emerged in one of the Western Malaysian colonies, which were situated in the vicinity of Thracians. Later, it was adopted by the other Black Sea Ionians. In Olbia, Apollo Yatros was worshipped separately and alongside with Apollo with such Epiclesis as Delphinios, Targelios, Lucius, and others. He had never been the head of the Albion Pantheon, even on the graffiti discovered in situ in his sanctuary on the western terminus. The Epiclesis Yetros appears after Delphinios. This cult is attested to by many graffiti, mostly originating from the sacred places devo devoted to Apollo Ross and dated to the, second quest to the second quarter of the sixth century. 
the main center of Apollo-Etros cult in Olbia was the Western Temenos, uh, which is also called the Temenos of Apollo-Etros. These Temenos functioned since the foundation of the city from the sixth century. And at the end of the sixth century, the first temple of Apollo-Etros was built there. From the mid sixth century, uh, the Western Temenos comprised the sanctuaries of Mater, Dioscure, Aphrodite, Hermes, and several other unidentified gods. While the Eastern Temenos, uh, which belonged only to Apollo, Delphinius, Zeus, and Athena, served as the main sacred zone for Olbeopolitans. Other districts of the city of Olbea and nearby settlement on the island of Berezan yielded additional evidence uh, on the cult of Apollyatros. The early inscriptions are very short and include just the name and epiclesis or merely epiclesis of the god. For instance, uh, Apollon Yetro or simply Yetro. Half of the graffiti are restored. Several long inscriptions are distinctive. Sometimes the epiclesis Yetros occurs together with the other epiclesis of Apollo. Uh, late 6th century graffiti Graffito addresses Delphinius and Yetros together. One of the most famous Albian inscriptions on the bone plug uh, is dated to the late 6th century. The meaning of the text is not clear. The first editors interpret it as a Didyman oracle. Many scholars follow them. I follow, however, another opinion that it was an inscription by the member of Apolline Association, or more precisely, a hymn to Apollo. The author of the text refers to Apollo as Didymian Malaysian, the bringer of happiness, the winner of Boreas. Uh, seven, Wolf is weak, uh, 70 line is terrible, 700, Archie is friendly through his gift. The Power of Yatros or Hila, 7,000 dolphin is wise, and so on. As a substitute for some epiclesis, the author of the inscription uses associations dolphin for Delphinius, wolf for Lucius. Apollo is not called Yatros, but it is alluded uh, to in the expression the power of Yatros. Yatros can be translated as Hila in this case, but the meaning of two words together remain unclear. In an early 4th uh, century graffito, known as the Albian calendar, Yatros, in the form Yatros, occurs alongside a whole list of Apollo's epiclesis, Delphinio, uh, Tergelio, Luceo. The graffito is inscribed on the fragment of a black glazed skithus. It was discovered in the sanctuary of Apollo Yatros in the western terminus. But the epiclesis Yetros follows Delphinius, the main epiclesis of Albion Apollo. Two graffiti from the late 6th century connect Apollo Yetros with Beristenes. I belong to Beristenes, Yetros, Lord of Beristenes, and um, to Apollo Yetros, Lord of Beristenes. Both inscriptions are restored, therefore, the interpretation is not unequivocal. The earliest lapidary inscription from Olbe mentioning Apollo at Ross is dated to the mid 5th century and describes him as the lord of Istras, Histria. Xanthos, son of Posios Olbeopolitis, dedicated to Apollo at Ross, lord of Istras. The interpretation of the words Istras in this inscription and Boristenes in the graffiti mentioned above is a subject of an ongoing controversy. It is still unclear whether they refer to cities or rivers. I suppose that Istros and Verstenes in the inscriptions are to be understood as the names of the cities. The substantiated participle Medeon, uh, which means the Lord, occurs in quite a number of inscriptions where the deity is called the Lord of a city or of an island. But uh, this participle is never used in conjunction with the river name. Another lapidary inscription is engraved on a statue base and is dated to the second half of the fourth century. Uh, <clears throat> Leocrates to Apollo Yetros, Athenian Stratonides made it. Several Albion inscriptions referring to Apollo Yetros are seriously damaged and their reconstruction is questionable. 
Many Albion inscriptions are dated to archaic period, and thus they are more ancient than evidence from all other places of Apollo Atros worship. But it is noteworthy uh, that all the early written evidence consists only of graffiti, and the first lapidary inscription from Olbia calls Apollo Atros Lord of Istros. Out of Olbia, the cult of Apollo Atros is attested to in Apollonia. Uh, History, Tiras, Polonia, History, Tiras, and uh, Bosporan cities, uh, Panticopea, Mirmekion, Nymphaean, Panagaria, Hermanas, Gargipia. The most ancient temples before the 5th century are known in Apollonia and History. Apollonia was one of the few Greek cities on the western coast of the Black Sea that had Greek name. Uh, furthermore, the name emphasized its allegiance to Apollo. The prides of Apollo at Ross were city eponyms in Apollonia and history. The cult of Apollo at Ross existed in the western Malaysian colonies of the region even during the Roman period, uh, since some coins minted in the first centuries uh, of the common era uh, bore the legend Apollo was yet true. The most ancient lapidated inscription uh, dated to the 5th century and it is from Istria. The majority of lapidary inscriptions are dated to the 4th century or later. Inscriptions uh, referred to the cult of Apollo at Ross are discovered uh, in uh, Penticopeum, Hermanasse, Phanagoria, Nymphaean, uh, and the uh, earliest one of them, graffiti, are dated to the uh, early 5th century from Penticopeum. Uh, this is from Hermanasse. I'd like to note here that only a small part of graffiti from Western Black Sea cities is published, unlike the Albion and Bosporon ones. An important point in favor of the Thracian component of the cult could be its origin. Uh, thus, thus, we have to see whether it came from West, from history and Apollonia, cities which were located very close to Thracia, or from the East, or from the cities of Bosporus, or from Olbia, which was in the middle. The most ancient evidence of the cult, as I have already said, is graffiti, mostly from Olbia, several from Bosporan cities and one from Hysteria. All of them are dated to the 6th century. The centuries in Olbia, Hysteria and Apollonia are dated to the same period, the 6th century. Nothing is known about the archaic centuries of Apollo Ross in Bosporus. In the 4th, 2nd uh, centuries, uh, Coins of Apollonia feature an image of Apollo holding an arrow and the legend Apollo nos yatru. There is a statue and the coin. Uh, the oldest uh, Albion literary inscription denotes Apollo at Ross, the Lord of Istras. In Istria and Apollonia, Apollo at Ross was the head of Pantheon. The historian prized of Apollo at Ross was the eponymous magistrate of the city. In Olbia, like in Miletus, it was the price of Apollo Delphinius. The bulk of the Bosporan data is dated to the 4th century and later. It is represented mostly by graffiti. The lapidary inscriptions are very few, other materials are absent. Arrow-shaped coins. Uh, Arrow-shaped coins are uh, often considered to be special votives of Apollo at Ross. From my point of view, they were not associated with the cult of this god. Many hordes with these coins were discovered in inner Thrace, where they were used primarily as money, and then for ritual purposes. There is no evidence of such coins in the Balkans, Asia Minor, and on the Aegean Islands. In Olbia, such coins were discovered, for example, in the sanctuaries of Achilles. Thus, the evidence of the cult of Apollo at Ross in the Western Black Sea area is diverse and rich, and some of the late materials, including the references to the eponymous prized in history in the 3rd century, and iconography of the Apollonian coins undoubtedly reflect the earlier phenomena. So, all the materials show that the cult of Apollo at Ross began to spread from the West. From my point of view, even Epiclesis Yatros is probably of Thracian origin. For the Greek settlers, uh, it sounded as well known word Yatros, Hila. On the one hand, it perfectly fits the Greek concept of Apollo, of Apollo's uh, 
healing cult and is also corresponds to the existing tradition of Thracian healers. For example, Zalmoxis, who was a ruler, healer and deity at the same time. But on the other hand, but on the other hand, dictionaries of the Thracian language uh, cite the word Yeter, meaning quick angel, and the name of the river Yeterus, mentioned by Plinius, you can see here, and in the medieval sources. Uh, the river is not far from Apollonian history. I suggest that Yetros was originally the indigenous name of a river god, like river gods Bristenes, Achilois, Hebros, and so on. And it was adopted by the first settlers of history and Apollonia, who probably maintained connections with the Thracian population of the area of river Yantra, Yeterus. I would like to draw attention to the fact that centuries of Apollo Tros do not contain any materials indicating a healing cult. The Greek word is spelled in two ways, Yetros and Yatros. The classical Greek form Yatros was spelled as Yetros in the Ionic dialect, uh, like uh, Hore and Hora. A long E only and never A uh, could appear in the Ionic Northwestern Black Sea area, even in the Greek usage of the word as healer. All the early inscriptions uh, feature the form Yetros. The spelling Yetros appeared in the fourth century, most probably under the influence of literary tradition. The original traditional name probably sounded as Yetros, but the Ionian Greeks preferred to adopt it uh, in the more understandable and phonetically familiar form of Yetros. On the other hand, the Thracian name of the river Yatros, Yantra, Yeteros may have sounded differently in different Thracian dialects. Many Thracian words, especially toponyms and hydronyms, entered the Greek language even before the Archaic period. The Ionian colonists knew the local Thracian names of the rivers and settlements and adopted them. The Greek sounded name of the god was adopted by the Greeks from Thracians, and as early as the beginning of the 5th century, the Greek sounded uh, epiclesis began to be understood as a Greek one with meaning hila. Scholars studying Greek cults often adopt a Hellenocentric position, which is to be reassessed when dealing with colonial cults. The Thracians influenced the every aspect of life of the northwestern Black Sea colonies during the Archaic period. This influence naturally affected the cults as well. While the colonists generally followed Tapatria, their religion was an, was an open system and absorbed indigenous cult or components of these cults. So the archaeological and epigraphic evidence available nowadays suggests that the cult of Apollo Etros amalgamated Greek and Thracian elements. It emerged on the western shore of the Black Sea and spread from there to the northern sea. Initially, Etros was the name of a river god. It was later adopted by the colonists and turned to a Greek sounding and easily understandable Etros, the healer, which was a good fit to Apollo's function as a patron of healing. However, Yetros of the Pontic colonies appears to have not been associated with healing. He only took on a name that sounded suitable for Apollo. The cult of Apollo Yetros attests to close relations of the colonists and the indigenous population. The Greeks came to the new land with their ancestral traditions, but the openness of their religion allowed them to adopt some local features. Thank you. This is Olbia and the sanctuary of Apollo Etros. Thank you. Thank you, Sofia, for this fascinating presentation. Do we have some questions for Sofia? Yes, I have a question. Please. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> do I understand that the appearance in Olbia is secondary because you say the origin is Thracian. So it would have come to Olbia from either Histria or another of the <clears throat> colonies on the Thracian coast. Would that be right? I'm sorry, can you repeat please? Because I don't hear good. I was asking whether <clears throat> the appearance of Apollo Yetros at Olbia is secondary and would have come from the colonies on the Thracian coast. 
Yes, from the from the Western uh, cities, from history and Apollonia. Thank you. <clears throat> mm, some other questions? I do have one very brief. Um, I'm interested in the process of naming new deities with indigenous name or vice versa. And I would like to know, in your opinion, what, is, what do you think is the reason behind it? it? Is it surviving? Is it for ideological and like political reasons? Um, is this a way to partake to some international, some globalizing dynamics, if, you want, if we want to use that term? Or is there just something underneath that we are not quite grasping yet? Uh, it's a difficult question. Uh, and I think in this case, it is, it is not uh, something political, but it, they, lived, uh, they lived very close together. So, so it's uh, you see, neighboring. It's cultural contacts, cultural like con related cultural contacts. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have, uh, please? Irad Malkin. So iconic representation was all else. No. There you go. Well, thank you very much. It really is a fascinating talk. I was wondering uh, how it became sort of an epithet of Apollo, because in other cases, Greeks, you're right about that, really picked up local river names, like uh, even in Sicily, uh, Gela, for example, or Boristenis, as you mentioned. But when do these become epithets of another deity? Uh, are there other parallels? It may be fruitful to look for some, I think. So, I'm sorry, I don't hear good here. Uh, do, do you hear me now? Do you hear me now? Uh, yes, but not good. Uh, how about, I'm getting closer to the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that better? Okay. <clears throat> I was asking about parallels in the cases when river names that are in fact adopted by Greeks, such as Gela, they tried Lindio, but they failed. They stuck to the local river name in other cases, like you mentioned. But other cases where you find parallels of such names being attached to a Greek deity, because they usually are uh, discrete entities. So are there parallels? It might be fruitful to look for some. <coughs> I must think about it. I can't answer. Okay. It's just a suggestion to look for some. Thank, thank you. you. Then thank you very much, Sofia. Let's move to our third speaker. And thank you.